Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things. Now today it is 200 years to the day since Jane Austen died, so I thought I would make a video about Jane Austen because I realised I haven't spoken about Jane Austen on this channel for ages. When I started this channel I was working at the Jane Austen Centre in Bath and I was rereading all of Jane Austen, so I talked about Jane Austen like a lot. In the first year that I had this channel I spoke about Jane Austen so much and I also did within that year a Jane Austen week where I spoke about all of the Jane Austen novels from my least favourite to my favourite. So I wanted to make a Jane Austen video for 200 years since Jane Austen died and I was trying to think what videos I wanted to make about Jane Austen because I've already made videos on all of her books, I've already wrote a blog post about my favourite characters in Jane Austen, I've already spoken about her TV adaptations, I've already spoken about her life, I've even already made a whole video on that favourite topic of mine, why it is not sad that Jane Austen did not get married. So I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about to do with Jane Austen and then I decided that I would address the question of how modern is Jane Austen? Jane Austen is often spoken about within popular culture as being a very, very modern woman, as being someone who was very, very feminist, very much ahead of her time, and who thought very, very differently from all the people around her. We often think of Jane Austen and her heroines as women who would rather live in the 21st century than they would in the Regency period, of women who really, really were very much ahead of her time. This idea, this perception of Jane Austen and her heroines as being in some way modern, despite the fact that Jane Austen died 200 years ago, I find really, really fascinating, and I think it's something really, really interesting to look at. For example, if any of you watched on TV a few years ago the miniseries Lost in Austin, which was absolutely hilarious, in that miniseries what happened was a modern woman who loved Jane Austen got sent randomly back through a portal into like Jane Austen Regency England and like met all the characters from Jane Austen and when she got sent back Lizzie Bennet got sent into the modern world, got sent into the 21st century and while the main character who gets sent back in time like messes everything up in Pride and Prejudice, meanwhile Lizzie Bennet is having a wonderful time in the 21st century and absolutely loving it and getting on much better there and fitting in much more there than she ever did in the Regency period. And the assumption there is of course that Lizzie Bennet is a really really modern woman and that actually Lizzie Bennet would have been perfectly at home in the modern world. Similarly, if you watch the film trailer for the 2005 Pride and Prejudice, and I'll link down below because it's on YouTube, the first words that the like narrator speaking over the thing says is, in an era where marrying a man was the best a woman could hope for, Elizabeth Bennet was way ahead of her time. Similarly, if you watch the trailer for the film Becoming Jane, which again I'll link down below, this was a film about Jane Austen about her youth which is very 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 loosely inspired by some things in her life like I really enjoy it it's a really fun film but it's completely inaccurate and the voiceover in that film trailer says that this is the story of a modern woman Jane Austen and her heroines especially Lizzie Bennet are very very much presented in popular culture as being this kind of pinnacle of modernity of being these people who were so much ahead of everyone else around them who really really went against the grain of Regency morals and this I find really really interesting because it's kind of not true and obviously there are ways in which you can see Jane Austen as being to a certain extent modern. There are certainly ways which you can see her as being ahead of her time in some of her views and certainly you can view her as being proto-feminist in a way that many people of her time were not. Even the fact that Jane Austen as a kind of upper middle class woman wanted to make her own money, wanted to not get married and wanted to make her living through writing is fairly modern to a certain extent in itself. Her heroines claim the right to speak on equal terms with men, her heroines also claim the right not to be poorly treated by men just because they are women and her heroines also claim the right to get some kind of happiness in life that is not just about marrying a wealthy man. One of the reasons why I think Jane Austen has come to be seen as modern is because her heroines want to marry for love and want to marry for emotion and place more value on love and of their own selves than society necessarily did at the time. But one that's kind of problematic, obviously within Jane Austen's time there was a much greater emphasis on women, especially women of the class that Jane Austen is writing about, to get married because they didn't have another way to support themselves if they weren't married because women of that class did not in general work. And unless you wanted to be a governess or live forever on the kindness of your wealthier relations you effectively did have to find someone to marry. But that was only a particular subset within society and actually Lizzie Bennet's views on wanting to marry for love rather than wanting to marry for for economic security are not necessarily that modern and more just not upper class for the time. But anyway, obviously in Jane Austen's time it was much more acceptable to marry someone you weren't like romantically in love with, to marry someone who you just kind of liked a bit, or to marry someone who you thought you would have a good life with. In Jane Austen's time it was considered perfectly acceptable 
people to marry for economic security and Jane Austen's emphasis on love and emotion and on wanting to be respected and admired and liked and appreciated by your spouse I can understand why in many ways you do see that as modern. I also think that Jane Austen's novels as literary works are very modern in a certain sense or was certainly ahead of her time in that I think she has many things in common with the Victorian period and you can see how she has influenced the Victorian period and you can see how her focus on character over story is something that massively influences the Victorian period. I haven't read that much pre-Austen to be fair but most of the stuff that I have read that is pre-Austen I find is more plot driven than character driven and doesn't have as much character development and that focus on character is in a way quite modern or certainly ahead of her time. It's partly as well I think because Jane Austen's love stories are so timeless and feel so relevant because they deal with very many kind of universal stories in a way and because so many contemporary rom-coms have quite similar plots to Jane Austen that also makes Jane Austen feel quite normal. Pride and Prejudice is about two people who meet really don't like each other but slowly realise they have more in common than they think. That is a very very common plot in a lot of love stories today. Mansfield Park and Emma both deal with that common trope of having two best friends who don't entirely realise that they could work very well as a couple. Marianne's story in Sense and Sensibility is so similar to so many modern love stories, is so similar to the plot of so many modern books. Jane Austen's plot lines and love stories do often feel quite modern because they feel so relatable and because they feel like things that could happen in different ways today. But that isn't what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is why Jane Austen is not modern because I feel this is in a way more interesting and less obvious potentially. Because Jane Austen is not a modern woman. Jane Austen is thoroughly embedded in Regency morals and values and so is Lizzie Bennet. So I want to focus particularly on Lizzie Bennet because I think she's a character that most people are familiar with in some way even if you haven't read Pride and Prejudice and because she's so often presented as this archetypal modern woman that Jane Austen created such as in that trailer for the 2000 2005 Pride and Prejudice. One of the reasons why I think Pride and Prejudice is enjoyed so much is that a lot of people really sympathise with Lizzie Bennet. She's a very sympathetic character and often we feel that if we were to go back in time to Regency England that we will behave a bit like Lizzie Bennet does. Lizzie Bennet refuses to completely conform to the social norms and codes of her time. She will walk happily through mud to go and see her sister when she's ill at Netherfield because she wants to. She says what she thinks to Mr Darcy and doesn't stand on ceremony or pretend to like him just because he is wealthier and more important socially than her. She tells Lady Catherine de Bourgh that she is Mr Darcy's social equal in a time where class means masses and he is so so much wealthier and more socially important than her. She tells Mr Darcy off for expecting women to have so many accomplishments and skills that you would never expect for men. Her sarcastic humour feels wonderfully modern and her desire to marry for love not for money and her refusal to marry a man she cannot respect feels modern and so it makes sense for us to view Lizzie Bennet as in some way modern and it makes sense that within popular culture she has become this idea of this modern Regency woman, this woman who is stuck in the wrong time period, who is so ahead of her time. But she's really really not. She is so Regency in so many ways. Although she will break some codes of her time, her morals and her standards are so thoroughly Regency and because she is Jane Austen's heroine and because Jane Austen celebrates Lizzie in so many ways you can understand too that Jane Austen's morals are thoroughly thoroughly Regency. Like the whole of Pride and Prejudice, so much of Pride and Prejudice is about the fact that Lizzie, and Lizzie is embarrassed about the way her family behave because her family don't behave in a way that's acceptable within Regency society because her family are not polite enough for that society because her family do not confine themselves to behaviour that is respectable and acceptable within Regency society but often they behave in a way that's perfectly acceptable in today's society. In the 2005 film of Pride and Prejudice Lizzie Bennet so often appears on screen without a bonnet on and this may sound like a silly point but it really annoys me because whenever I see it I think no Lizzie Bennet would never go outside without a bonnet on because that wasn't what you did in Regency society it wouldn't have been respectable for a woman to go outside without a bonnet on and Lizzie Bennet is thoroughly respectable she may be sarcastic she may be quite witty and funny she may be snarky she may not always be polite to the people she's supposed to be but she's still respectable unlike Lydia Bennet because you know who would go outside without a bonnet on in Regency society, Lydia Bennett would. And actually within Pride and Prejudice it's not someone like Lizzie who is very respectable in her behaviour, who is so worried about appearances, who is so concerned about how people will judge her family. She is not modern. Whereas Lydia Bennett, who wants to be able to explore her sexuality, who wants to be able to flirt with people, who wants to be able to go out on her own, who wants to be able to have fun, who wants to be not constrained by 19th century morals, who wants to be able to talk to men and doesn't think that it's improper of her to want to talk to men as well as women and who doesn't want to be demure. Lydia is much more of a modern character in many ways than Lizzie Bennet is and yet 
Lydia is not celebrated in the book, Lydia is very very much censured. If you don't know what happens in Pride and Prejudice there will be a few spoilers and I will put a thing up on the screen and take it down when it's done, but Lydia does not get a happy ending, she gets Wickham. Wickham is not a happy ending. Lydia is highly criticised both by Lizzie and by Jane Austen for her bad, immoral, kind of unladylike behaviour, for wanting to fully break the social codes of the time, because that was unacceptable. The film Becoming Jane, the character of young Jane Austen elopes with a man at one point, which is the only bit of that film that really really annoys me because there is no way in hell that Jane Austen would have ever eloped with someone. If you read her books it's pretty pretty clear where she stands on elopement, it's pretty pretty clear that elopement is a really really bad, awful, completely immoral, like dreadful dreadful thing to do. Lizzie Bennet is not someone who doesn't care about what society thinks about her, Lydia Bennet I would say is, and in that way Lizzie Bennet is much more constrained by Regency rules and social norms of the time than Lydia Bennet ever is, but it is Lizzie Bennet that is the heroine, it is Lizzie Bennet who is rewarded, it is Lizzie Bennet who is proved right within the context of the book, and Lydia Bennet is not. And I would say that shows a lot about Jane Austen too, although in some circumstances she and her characters did break with social norms, for the most part her books are about conforming to social and moral codes of the time. If you look at Northanger Abbey it is in many ways a book about teaching Catherine Morland to not be so excessive and to not be so imaginative, teaching her to be more like a sense sensible, proper, respectable Regency woman. You can view Emma quite similarly as being about teaching Emma to be more respectable and to be more polite to people, to fit more into the social codes and to be less modern. Because Emma, if you can certainly view as a modern character, and certainly some of the things she says and the way she speaks and the way she talks to people is quite modern, and yet she is also shown to be wrong to a certain extent within the book, and she has to kind of reform her character to change her personality so that it's more suitable for the Regency period. Mansell Park is so much about Fanny's moral goodness and how strong she stays in the face of what are more modern characters. Mary and Henry Crawford I think feel much much more modern than Fanny, but Fanny who is more traditional in her morals and values, she wins. So I was recently watching a video by Hélène from Books by Lanes and she was talking about Pride and Prejudice and Emma, talking about how there's a lot of, as she called it, girl on girl hate in Jane Austen, and there is. The way that Lydia Bennet and also Charlotte Lucas are presented in Pride and Prejudice and also the way that Harriet Smith is presented in Emma. It can often be a bit malicious and to a certain extent judgmental. Charlotte Lucas in Pride and Prejudice is very very much criticised for marrying a man that she does not love. Lydia Bennet, also Kitty Bennet and Harriet Smith and quite a lot of other figures within different Jane Austen novels are highly criticised for being very very silly. And Jane Austen's criticism of silly women is quite interesting because on the one hand it is very not modern, it is very not ahead of its time because it's very judgmental and it's very limiting and it is also criticising women who behave in what Jane Austen kind of views as being like a wild way, especially in terms of Lydia Bennet is criticising her behaviour because she does not behave in a demure, proper Regency way, it's criticising behaviour which is breaking social codes. But beyond that, her treatment of Lydia Bennet, and also her treatment of someone like Harriet Smith, who is not presented like Lydia as being kind of immoral and willful, but is presented more as just being a bit silly. I can kind of see why Jane Austen was incredibly frustrated with women who were silly, because she lived in a time where people thought that women were not as intelligent as men, and so the women that, to her mind, went around kind of reinforcing this stereotype but by behaving in what she considered a silly way, she was very very angry with them. And in a way I think one of the ongoing appeals of Jane Austen is that her novels are not completely modern, is that they are about the Regency period, they are about Regency morals, they are so embedded within what was expected at the time, and that adds extra interest to her books, and that's what very many people love about it, but in a way she's also just modern enough and her characters are just different enough and they're just fighting against the social order just enough, not too much like Lydia Bennet, but just enough like Lizzie Bennet that we can still sympathise with them and it is a way into that unfamiliar world. Basically I think what I'm trying to say is that Jane Austen is not that modern and Jane Austen is very very much embedded still within the Regency world, as you probably would expect because you know that was the world she was from, but I also think that there are aspects within her work that are quite modern and quite refreshing and quite different and there are moments of real rebellion against the social order within her works. So I think maybe what I'm trying to say, to draw a distinction, is that Jane Austen was not modern, but she maybe was just a bit, though not massively, ahead of her time. So thank you very much for watching, let me know down in the comments what you think of all of this stuff, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Happy 200 years of Jane Austen!